الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم قال وقلت يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن الله إنما أن جاني بالصدق وإنما من توبتي أن لا أحدث إلا صدقا ما بقيت قال فالله ما علمت أن أحد من المسلمين أبلاه الله في صدق حديث منذ ذكرت ذلك لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا يوم هذا أحسن مما أبلاني الله به والله ما تعمدت كذبة منذ قلت ذلك لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا يوم هذا وإني لا أرجو أن يحفظني الله فيما بقي إلى آخر الحديث أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زيد علما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعليك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا وما صلنا وما علنا أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر لا إله إلا أنت Coming to the end of this hadith narrated by Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu anhu. Hadith Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu anhu near the end, he has mentioned that one of the greatest ni'mat after the ni'mat of Islam, which has become the means of my toba being accepted, is the quality of being truthful and speaking the truth. This is a quality that we should also adopt. By adopting this quality of speaking the truth and being honest and being truthful, the way Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu had received this certificate and guarantee of acceptance of Tawbah, we will also receive this guarantee on the Day of Judgment and also we will experience the benefit of speaking the truth and being truthful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in several places in the Qur'an Sharif has encouraged us, has told us to adopt taqwa and after adopting the taqwa practical method have been mentioned. Ya ayyul ladheena amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen This verse which is related to this story and incident of Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu anhu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse he is addressing the believers that we should adopt taqwa. And one practical me- method of adopting taqwa is being from waqoonu ma'as sadiqin, be from the truthful people. By adopting this quality, it will help us to bring the quality of taqwa. And near the end of this hadith, Ka'b bin Malik anhu, he has narrated and mentioned about the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time of traveling where the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would like to travel on a Thursday and when he would return, he would return to the masjid and also perform to raka'a salah and in this hadith also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after performing to raka'a salah he sat down with the sahaba radiallahu alayhi wa jama'in and karguzari and the munafiqun, the those individuals who left, who stayed behind from this battle, they came forward and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had this gathering. So many, many lessons that we've discussed in this long hadith of Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu anhu, around 40, 43 um, lessons that we have discussed. There are many other lessons that are also um, collated and collected by our ulama as well. One of the lessons that we learned from this is in the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the wahi and the revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would come. And in this hadith we learn that the sign of the acceptance of the Tawbah of Ka'ab bin Malik anhu is clear through the revelation and through the verse of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran Sharif. However, the wahi and the revelation is not gonna come down in our days. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not with us. 
So at that time, Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he received these glad tidings and received this um, news of acceptance of Tawbah. So now what do we do in our time? How are we going to understand if our Tawbah has been accepted? Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu was fortunate that he got the guarantee directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for us, Wahi is not going to come down. The Jibreel alayhi salatu is not going to come down and say, Chalo, your Tawbah is accepted. So how are we going to realize and understand if our Tawbah is accepted or not? In the previous hadith, we had a brief discussion on this as well. Of the Mufti Taqul Uthmani Dhamad Barakatuhum, in his Islahi Majalis, volume number five, there's a section where he talks about Tawbah. And in that section, speaking about Tawbah, he brings a discussion from Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, rahmatullahi alayhi, a famous Sufi from Andalusia in Spain. Sheikh Ibn Arabi, rahmatullahi alayhi, he's of this opinion that the sign of the acceptance of Tawbah is that the thought of the sin is completely removed. That a person doesn't even think of the, think of the sin anymore. It's completely come out of his mind. If the thought comes back to his mind, that means his Tawbah is not accepted. Now, obviously, for us, that's very difficult. However, Mufti Taqwit Ma'in Dawad Barakatum, he says, that generally the majority of the ulama and the Sufayani, Sufayani Kiram, what they say is that a person when he does Tawbah from the sin, now when a person has done the Tawbah from the sin, the thought might come to his mind, but there are reasons why the sin and the thought uh, of the sin will come to his mind. There are three reasons. So the three reasons that the thought of the sin could, could, to, could come to a person's mind are, number one, he wants to remind himself how he enjoyed committing that sin. The thought of a sin coming back to his mind could be for a few reasons. Number one, he wants to remind himself how he enjoyed that sin, how good he was. Now, obviously, this is evil and this is wrong and this is bad. That's something we should take away, ourselves away from. Number two, the second reason that could be that there's a person who has done Tawbah, but he's doubting his Tawbah in a way that is accepted by Allah or is he not accepted. So he keeps reminding himself of this, oh, I've done Tawbah, but is it done or not done? Is it accepted? Is it valid or not valid? And then he just, uh, you know, he keeps reminding himself of this. Again, this is also something that uh, the Tanu, uh, the Tanu Rahmatullahi Alayhi, the Murti Taqwit Man Dabra Katum, he quotes the Tanu Rahmatullahi Alayhi. So the Tanu Rahmatullahi Alayhi said that this is something that we should also refrain from, that we shouldn't doubt our Tawbah. When uh, all the conditions are met, in the beginning of the chapter we mentioned the conditions. If all the conditions are met, then a person shouldn't doubt his Tawbah. It's like he gives an example that if the student has done a mistake in a classroom and he has gone to the teacher and apologized, then when he has apologized and said sorry to the teacher once, that should be sufficient. He shouldn't keep going back and back and back and repeating himself because the teacher will get upset that he's not um, satisfied with me saying to him that I have accepted his apology. So the teacher will be annoyed by this. So like this, when we have done Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have fulfilled, fulfilled all the conditions, then we should be satisfied that my Tawbah is accepted. And the third reason why a person could think of the sin again is to remind himself where he was before and where he is now. To remind himself where he was before, now where he is now. In that way, he'll be able to have the quality of doing shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my Allah has moved me away from disobedience and has brought me to obedience, has moved me away from sins. Now he has brought me towards piety and taqwa. Now this third quality, this is what Sufayn al-Kiram rahimullah say, that if a person is remembering the sin that he may have committed in his previous life, it could be for this reason, that he's reminding himself of this tawfiq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him of moving away from the disobedience and to obedience. So to understand this topic, what we just mentioned is that the wahi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to come to us. So how are we going to know our tawbah is accepted? Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi also mentions this, that number one, that a person's life is better compared to what he was before. There's progress in his life. When a person has done the Tawbah, there's more good deeds in his life now. There's increase in him being inclined towards good deeds and moving away from evil and bad things. Number two, he also at the same time, what he does is that um, he reminds himself of the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the sin that he may have done. 
But now he's remembering that my uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me. He has, his rahmah is upon me. His mercy is upon me. Now I have moved away from the evil and come towards good. And also at the same time, he um, has become more humble in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is more connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what Ibn Qayyim rahim, 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 says that this is the, these are the signs of the person's tawbah being accepted. Now the conclusion of the full hadith you have mentioned around 40, 45 lessons. Now there are a few lessons that you just to summarize again. First of all, one of the greatest uh, lessons that we learn from this long hadith is that the ni'mat of iman that we have. Ni'mat of iman that we have is the greatest ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing can come closer to this ni'mat. After this ni'mat, Imam uh, Hadha Ka'ab radiallahu anhu, he brought the quality of honesty and being truthful. So this uh, quality and sifat we should also adopt and we should also think in our life is there any quality in my life that is has brought changes in my life and has took me more closer and more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one other lesson that we learn from this is that the loyalty and the iman of Ka'ab radiallahu anhu his wife and the sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in. Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in and also we uh, learn uh, Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in. We learn that Ka'ab radiallahu anhu even though he was being you know one of the uh, one of those who took part in the battle of Ahad one of the greatest Sahabi and he had took and played a good big role in you know in strengthening the Muslim Ummah at that time. The mistake that he made took him in a such a position where he was um, isolated and moved away from the Sahaba and at the same time 40 days had gone by he had, a, on, uh, he had an offer from the uh, neighboring country to come to his, their land and be honored and respected and welcomed and treated in a VIP manner. Even then Ka'ab radiallahu anhu didn't lose faith didn't lose his iman he didn't, he didn't break his loyalty and his uh, um, commitment to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Rather that took him more close and closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. At the same time we learn his wife. Now even though she was obviously at the same time, you know, in such a difficult moment. 40 days had gone by. Now Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's hukam is that even she has to uh, in, you know, move herself away from her husband. His wife also didn't, you know, break the loyalty and the pledge and that uh, aqda that she made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at the same time, we learn the loyalty of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in. Remember, the ukhuwa and the brotherhood that they had within themselves. Now for them to be told by Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, that you, need to, um, uh, you need to severe ties and you need to move away from Ka'ab radiallahu anhu. How difficult it must be for the Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in. But the hukam of Allah, the hukam of Nabi Sallallahu was in front of them before their own desire, before themselves. So then also you know, we learn from them that the iman and their faith and the loyalty and the uh, strong iman that they have. So this is what we need to also bring into our life, that how we should also be in our life. That when the command of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in front of us and at the same time our desires, our culture is in front of us, we need to give the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, priority. And one more lesson we learn from here is, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is rahmatul lil alameen. Merciful to all mankind. He would never even hurt any animal. He would even hurt anybody. But here, to do islah and rectify his companion, to make the Sahabi radiallahu an one of those who is successful in this world, who is purified in this world, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is boycotting him. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wouldn't even hurt anybody, let alone you boycott somebody, one of his own companions. But here, for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to boycott the Ka'ab radiallahu anhu and the other three companions was accepted at that time was accepted it was a method of doing islah so what the point that is trying to be made here is that sometime in our life when we pledge allegiance when we get bay'at to our sheikh at that moment the wazifa or the prescription 
or the uh, mashura they may give, it may seem difficult to us, it may seem strict to us, but at times that will become the means of our Islam. That will become the means of our Islam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is boycotting his own companion. But after 50 days, look at the blessing that he received, that the verse of the Quran is received in his favor. So like this, when we are connected to a sheikh, when we are connected to who, our spiritual mentor, sometimes when we present our difficulty to them or when we present our illness to them, they may prescribe to us something to us that may seem against our nafs, against our desire, but by following their advice, by following their mashwara, inshallah, at the end of that, we will see goodness in our life. So these are the few lessons. And lastly, the Ka'ab radiallahu anhu, he practically um, shown to us the different methods of showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon receiving a ni'mat. That when we receive a blessing in our life, how do we show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Number one, he, what did he do when he received the good news? He went to perform sajda. When he performed sajda in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are saved from a calamity or when we receive a ni'mat, if you are able to do so, we perform the sajda shukr, perform a prostration of shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, the other uh, method he uh, adopted and uh, showed to us is by giving a, a blessing and uh, sorry, uh, giving a gift to the person who has come to give the ni'mat and give the blessing to him. So give that um, good news to him, glad tidings to him. He presented his own uh, cloak to him. And the third thing that we learn from showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the few lessons that we learn from this long hadith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to do tawbah. And lastly, one of the things is that one discussion, why is it that we don't feel the benefit of the tawbah? Why don't we feel the ex and experience the virtues and the benefit of tawbah? In answering this, there's a discussion. The answer to this given is that at times what happens is that we do Tawbah from one sin, but we don't do Tawbah from others. So we do Tawbah from one sin, but our mind does not go towards doing Tawbah from others. So when we have done Tawbah, we need to do Tawbah completely, inshallah. So we think in our own life, all the, the, the sins that we may have done or we are involved in committing, we need to do Tawbah from all of them. In that way, we will see the benefit of the Tawbah. And also at the same time, we need to remind ourselves that when we've done Tawbah from something, we try to remove and move ourselves away from them. At times we do the Tawbah, but then we go back to it. And we don't remove and move ourselves away from it. So if we want to ben see the benefit of the Tawbah, um, then we need to detach and separate ourselves from the sin that we may we have in, uh, in, involved in. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, those sins that we have done in the previous in our past life, those sins that we may commit in the future, وَمَا أَخَرْتُ وَمَا عَلَنْتُ those sins that we may have done openly, وَمَا أَسَرْتُ and those sins that we may have done secretly and hiddenly, وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَمُ بِهِ مِنِّي and those sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the complete knowledge of. Sometimes we don't even realize that we've done the sin, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the knowledge of that. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us completely and give us a tawfiq to adopt the correct form of tawbah اللهم آمين سبحان الله بحمدي سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم جزاك الله أن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآله سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين رحمتك يا رحمة الرحيم